Zaman newspaper ringed by police barricades. Officers heavily armed, positioned all around. This the scene now as journalists enter the building. These images captured on a mobile phone this week. Since the building was seized, dozens of police officers have occupied every floor, the cafeteria too, and it's tense. Here, a row between a journalist and a police officer erupts after he demands to watch a pro-government TV channel. This journalist witnessed what happened. She's talking to other people uh, about the altercation and she says she's shouting out loud. He looked me in the eye and called me a terrorist. This is only one of the incidents of such nature because the whole building is occupied by officers right now. We are under police surveillance. We are being treated as as though we are criminals. Zaman newspaper was raided by police two weeks ago in a takeover ordered by the courts. Turkey's biggest selling daily was being run by the movement of US-based cleric Fethullah Gulen, once an ally of President Tayyip Erdogan. Erdogan's government has denounced Gulen's movement as a terrorist group which seeks his overthrow. Zaman is now under new management. No surprise then that the first edition of the revamped newspaper showed a beaming President Erdogan and a gushing story about his great feats in bridge construction. On the other side of Istanbul, Zaman's takeover has alarmed journalists at Chamuriyet newspaper. They fear a widening assault from the government on press freedom. We have a president who hates to be criticized really and he is the one who was responsible. Chamuria's editor Chandunda incurred the wrath of Erdogan's government last year with a report alleging Turkey's secret services had sent arms to Islamist rebels in Syria. He and another Chamuria journalist were jailed on spying charges. His letters to EU leaders from his jail cell appealing for help were mostly ignored. In the prison, I wrote letters all to all of them saying that uh, they are lying to, them, to, to you because the Turkish Prime Minister insistently saying that there's no journalists inside the Turkish prisons and I was the one who was in prison, uh, journalists inside the prisons and watching it in, in the prison as a, as a journalist. He fears the government are now circling his newspaper and believes European leaders have already abandoned them. It's a shame for Europe, of course. I mean. They sold their uh, principles for their daily um, interest, for daily interest, and uh, in fact, we are the ones who are fighting for European uh, principles as press freedom, as human rights, democracy, secularism, etc., and they prefer Erdogan just to stop the flow of immigrants. Turkey's independent broadcast media also feels under threat. A recent incident that caused alarm involved Istanbul-based IMC, a channel with a strong focus on Kurdish issues. IMC's anchorwoman Banu Guven was interviewing the newly freed Chamuriyet journalist when the state satellite operator pulled the plug. The order was already there because we are reporting uh, from every corner uh, the truth and uh, that truth the government and the president don't want to see on the screen. The Turkish government has insisted that it was not involved in the court-backed takeover of Zaman newspaper and says the decision was not political. Outside Zaman's offices on the night of the raid, a crowd chants, a free press won't be silenced, even as they're charged by riot police. <laughs> Yet as the migrants deal was thrashed out in Brussels today, it seems that negotiators blocked their ears. Turkey and the problematic issue of press freedom has slipped well down the agenda.
Well, on the issue of press freedom, the Turkish Prime Minister recently said Turkey is a democracy which maintains global standards and that their objective is to protect lives, dignity, human rights and freedoms. Joining us now from Istanbul is the MP Egemen Bausch from the ruling AK party. He was Turkey's Minister of European Union Affairs from 2011 to 2013 and their chief negotiator for Turkish accession to the European Union. So let's begin with the deal on refugees first of all. Who is this a good deal for? Well, it's not a good deal for anyone. The best deal would have been establishing a democracy in Syria, getting rid of the dictator in Damascus, and sending the Syrian refugees where they belong, to their homeland. But short of that real solution, this is a contemporary approach of trying to help. As we speak, my country has been hosting almost 3 million Syrian refugees in Turkey. We are providing a safe haven, food, health care, education, and other social needs to these people. And we've been doing this for almost two and a half years. We have spent almost 10 billion euros. And it is time that our allies, our partners in Europe, where most of these Syrians want to go to, go into their deep pockets and help Turkey out. Yeah, so it feels like Turkey has deal. been bought. And it is the refugees who are the Excuse losers. Me? It feels as though Turkey has been bought. Well, it has not been bought, but Turkey has already spent more than 10 billion euros. And it is time for the international community to reach out and help this crisis. Turkey has been providing a humanitarian assistance to all the people with no discrimination coming out of Syria. But the real solution would be an international solidarity to establish democracy in Syria. Yes. Now they're well, establishing now in the mad terrorist situation, organizations. Instead, they should establish political organizations and run their government. But we're now in the crazy situation of new Syrian refugees who get from Turkey to Greece being sent back to Turkey, while older Syrian well, refugees every, who were in Turkey every get sent back to Greece. Refugee that will be, for every refugee that will come back to Turkey, European Union has agreed to accept one Syrian refugee yes. to a EU country. You can see why Amnesty say half of the Syrian people help is going to help the half of the Syrian people reach out to European countries and cities and try to establish a, at least safer life. Can you and they will have to contribute to those countries. Yeah, can, but can you see why Amnesty International have called this a dark day for humanity? Well, what has been happening in Syria for the last two years has been a very dark period for humanity because the international community has been looking the other way to the atrocities of the dictator of Damascus, who is bombing his own cities, who is killing his own citizens without any discrimination. And that's outrageous. This gentleman has been a puppet of President Putin of Russia, and he is getting his way. Okay. It should not be so. Let me... It is time for the United Nations to interfere into Syria and bring democracy to Syria. If you and I can enjoy democracy, people of Syria should also enjoy democracy and yeah. run their own country. Let, let me, I'm sorry to cut you off, and I'm, I'm sorry we don't have more time, but I just want to bring you to the question that we were just examining with our last report. I mean, you talk about democracy. There is, there is a severe attack on the freedom of the press in Turkey, according to Turkish journalists. Does that really make Turkey let me compatible tell you, let me tell with you about talking about EU membership? Issue. The decision, well, the decision of the Turkish judiciary is a legal one, not a political one. The Turkish National Security Council and the independent courts of Turkey have declared the FETO terrorist organization to be an outlawed entity. And some of the newspapers and journalists have been supporting terrorist organization. If a group of people... This is still to freedom of speech, though, isn't it? Take There's the democratically attack. elected government... If, if some people try to oust the democratically elected government through undemocratic means, that is an act of terrorism. And anywhere around the world, in any democracy, the state would interfere and 
try to protect well, no, the liberty Europe, and freedom of not the press, but also the whole society. Well, nowhere and that's in what Europe the do newspapers get invaded by the authorities and taken over, and do television stations get taken off well, there? That's, the, that's just not the European. The authorities... Are you going to listen to me? I'm trying to explain to you that the Turkish authorities have been proceeded with the instructions of the independent courts who have declared that there is a terrorist organization and this newspaper was supporting the terrorist organization. These people have tried to, to outlaw the democratically elected government through undemocratic means and that's not acceptable. And according to the National Security Council, where all segments of the government are represented, this organization and that they were supporting have been deemed a terrorist organization. No country, no democratic country would allow a terrorist organization to establish a parallel state and run the country on its own. When do you and think Turkey's decision is definitely legal, not political. Just in te the 10 seconds we have left, give me a date for when you think Turkey will join the EU. Turkey should have joined many, many years ago, since 1996, Turkey has been a member of Customs Union. I hopefully, as of June, Turkish citizens will be able to travel to EU countries without a visa. And I'm hoping that Europe will understand that this is a mutually beneficial transaction, that Turkey will contribute a lot to Europe as much as it gets contributions from Europe. So the membership should have happened in the past, but it's not, never it's too late, hopefully in the near future. Mr. Bausch, thank you very much indeed for joining us.